Have you ever been in situations where you have had to wonder about your colleague or superior? Is this playfulness or more? Where is the boundary? Or in a personal sexual context, I'm not sure if I wanted this. Today, I will discuss six different ways in which gaslighting is used for sexual manipulation, whether in your personal relationships or at work. I'm Professor Shania Rathod, a psychiatrist in the United Kingdom. I make videos on mental well-being and post them weekly on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next one. Gaslighting is a form of emotional abuse that makes you question your own perceptions, memories, and even your self-worth. Now, while this is not a psychiatric diagnosis, it can cause significant emotional distress. Especially in the case of sexual manipulation, this tactic can be especially damaging, making victims doubt their own instincts about intimacy, consent, and boundaries. So here are some examples of how gaslighting in sexual manipulation might feel like. Dismissing sexual harassment. In the workplace, gaslighting can silence victims of harassment. A common technique involves dismissing or trivializing inappropriate behavior, making the victim feel unreasonable for being uncomfortable. Imagine an employee feeling uncomfortable with a colleague's lingering touches. When they speak up, the colleague responds, it was just a friendly touch, you're just being dramatic, or I'm just being empathetic. Now this dismisses the employee's discomfort. The tactic also makes the employee feel guilty for speaking up in the first place and they may begin to question their judgment. Mm, was I overreacting? Maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe they are just affectionate. Over time, the victim may hesitate to report further concerns and worry about being labeled as too sensitive or a troublemaker by colleagues or superiors. As the victim may remain silent, the behavior is likely to continue. But there are broader consequences in that such dismissiveness fosters a toxic work culture where inappropriate behavior just goes unchallenged. Number two, shifting blame for unwanted advances. When a partner or a colleague crosses a boundary, instead of apologizing, they might say, well, how is it my fault? You are sending mixed signals. I thought you wanted this. This shifts the blame to the victim, causing them to doubt their actions and questioning their own boundaries, creating insecurity and confusion. Number three, denying non-consent. Now imagine a partner or a close colleague or a superior persistently pressurizing someone into intimacy. After giving in, the victim brings it up maybe the next day or say, I didn't really want to. The manipulator will respond, what are you talking about? You seemed fine at the time. You didn't say no. Now this tactic dismisses the victim's feelings, making them doubt their own experience. Over time, if this is consistent, they may question their reality, internalizing the manipulator's narrative. Number four, gaslighting after assault. In cases of sexual assault within a work or personal relationship, gaslighting can be especially damaging. Now, suppose someone says no to sex, but their partner continues and forces them into the act. When the victim tries to discuss it later, the abuser might say, hmm, I thought you liked it rough or you didn't seem that upset at the time. Now, these statements deny the reality of the assault, making the victim question whether what happened was really that bad. Number five, twisting memories over time. In longer term relationships, gaslighting can become even more subtle and corrosive. Over time, a manipulative partner might start subtly rewriting the history of their sexual encounters. For example, if one partner sets a boundary about not wanting to engage in specific sexual activities, the gaslighter might later say, hmm, we have done this before, you know, and you didn't mind it. In fact, you quite enjoyed it at the time. In reality, the victim may have reluctantly agreed to it once, but expressed discomfort afterwards. And number six, making the victim doubt their attractiveness. In some cases, gaslighting can be used to manipulate someone's self-esteem to gain sexual control. For instance, a partner might say, no one else would want you if you can't even handle this, after pushing unwanted sexual acts. 
This implies that their discomfort is abnormal or unattractive, making the victim feel like they need to toughen up to maintain their partner's interest or avoid rejection. Gaslighting and sexual manipulation works by undermining the victim's confidence in their feelings and boundaries. When someone's concerns are repeatedly labeled as wrong or exaggerated, they begin to doubt their own reality, allowing the manipulator to push boundaries and deny responsibility. This often leaves the victim isolated and less likely to seek help. Now, each situation is different, and these are just some brief examples to increase awareness. Many of us go through these situations, but we don't recognize them. But a balanced view is also important. Self-awareness allows us to weigh up the situation, looking at the bigger context. If you believe you may be facing gaslighting in any form or sexual harassment or manipulation, here are some tips that might help you. Firstly, start documenting the behavior. Why? Because gaslighting makes you doubt your reality. Keeping records grounds you in the truth. How should you do it? Well, write down incidents, dates, and details. As an example, you might want to write on this date, this month, your partner or colleague or superior made an inappropriate comment, write the comment. And when I expressed discomfort, they said I was too sensitive or X, Y, Z. Number two, trust your feelings and set boundaries. Why? Gaslighters make you question your reactions. Trust your feelings and assert your boundaries. How should you do that? Communicate assertively. As an example, regardless of what you think, this behavior makes me feel uncomfortable and I need it to stop. And number three, seek support and take action. Why? Gaslighting isolates you. Support from trusted people helps validate your experience. How do you do that? Reach out to your friends, your family, if it is workplace, to HR or even seek therapy. As an example, you might say, I have noticed a pattern of manipulation and I need help addressing it or deciding my next steps. Empower yourself with the right information and take steps to take control of the situation. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to my channel. The more subscribers I have, the more YouTube gives me the ability to make more creative videos. Like it, share it, tell it. Tell it to all the people you know. And thank you for watching.